Smithy, what do you reckon, mate? Mm. Well, yeah, it's it's big news, isn't it? That you know, this close to finals and particularly where the Rabbitohs are placed. Like, so they get the bye this week, so they've moved to thirty points, I believe it is. And look, there, there's a chance that if they don't win their last game against the Roosters, um, they'll miss out altogether. And now it's been made even harder with, um, you know, their their star fullback Latrell Mitchell being ruled out for that game with the one one match suspension. So. There's a lot happening. It's just the timing of it's really strange to move on um, a guy like Sam Burgess you know, because of yeah, you know, and the reasons are, are valid, of course. You know, like you can't sort of question the reasons why, you know, because of the impending, you know, birth of his of his child and and the head coaching role, of course, as we know that he's um, he's been given next year in the UK, of course. But um, you know, I'd I'd like to think that you know Sam's professional enough to be able to. Um, concentrate on his role as a Rabbitohs assistant coach for the remainder of this year and, and move through those um, those other things that are happening in his life at the moment. Um, just a really strange time to, to move some coaching staff on, given where they are at the moment. And they're not traveling well. Like, let's be honest. Like, they're, n- they're not playing great football at all. Um, and I know um, Jason Demetrio just said there was a high quality game on the weekend. Well, you know, they took on the Knights and they are they are a team that's Obviously, playing really well. They've won, was it seven in a row now, Kempi? Mm. Um, you know they've got the longest streak just behind um, Penrith. But like the Rabbitohs completed at under sixty percent. Like you, you can't say that that's a high quality game when you've com- when your team's completed just over fifty percent of of their um, sets of six. Like that's that's not great at all. You know, the quality football sides, they, they complete over 75% pretty much every week, you know, sort of touching up around the 80% mark. So um, there's a lot of signs, and it's not just from the last game. You know, ever since around, I reckon, the middle stages of the year, and we spoke to Damian Cook about this last week, you know, they, they went on that that little run where they were, they, were pro- they were the form team of the competition from round 6 to 12. And a lot of people were saying, well, you know, it's the year of the bunny. They could they could really take this premiership on and, and they could end Penrith's run. Since then, they just – they have not fired a shot. They've won a game here or there, but they've just – they've really struggled. And, and you know, I, I do agree with the quote from, um, from the coach saying that, you know, they're down on confidence. There's no doubt about that because they're just – they're not winning football games. They're just – things that they're trying, they're just – it's not working for them, but – yeah, it's 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 huge news, and it's what it is is it's it's a major just disruption coming into the most important part of the season for them. They're, they're, they're probably lucky they got the bye, Kempi. Mm, mate, I uh, look. This is a tough one because <laughs> you don't want to call, you don't want to say people aren't telling the truth, but at the same time, I just think that. Look, I think that the Rabbitohs could have maybe handled it differently. As a mm. huge business, mm. of course, there's a certain uh, front or there's a certain story you have to tell your huge audience and huge community. So I understand the pressures of that. But I do believe the way it's kind of been presented has left a lot of room for speculation, and that's the last thing the club needs. Mm. I think they probably would have been better off. Um, and very easy for me to say. I don't have, you know, multiple shareholders, you know, hundreds of thousands of fans, all of that to put pressure on a decision. Mm. But I think they could have just got on the front foot and said, this happened, this happened, this happened. We decided, you know, to part ways. Yeah, yeah the headlines would have been for the next 24 hours would have been pretty hectic. Mm. But after that, the speculation kind of goes because you've just explained kind of what it is. Whereas I kind of feel like at the moment, it just, it's one plus one is not equaling two. Yeah. So let go of, at the moment, their defense is, you know, nowhere near where we know it is. No. If there's literally one player in the entirety of the NRL that you'd want in your squad right now to get your defence right, it'd be Sam Burgess. Yeah. Well, you know what? He's been a part of that organisation and he's won he's won a premiership there. So he knows what it takes, um, you know, to, to be involved in the big games. He's, and, and outside of that that grand final that he was a part of, like he's been involved in, um, you know, test matches and, and other finals matches as well with, with the Rabbitohs. So coming into, as I said, like the most important part of the season, would you not want someone in there with his experience, his big game experience, you know, just to just to be around the players and 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 to guide them through it and and talk to them about, you know, getting out of this form slump that they're in. So that's that's the part that doesn't add up for me. So you know, like this, 
they've come out and, and the CEO has, has given his statement and, and given his reasons. So that's that's we have to take his word for it. But it's just really strange timing for me. Mm. Coming into the last two rounds, I know they've got the bye this week, but my goodness, the importance of that last round against the Roosters where, where they're not going to have Luttrell there um, and they're playing against a side that, that has hit a bit of form in the Roosters. Well, they, they are playing some good football at the moment. They kept Parramatta to 12 points the other night and they scored 30 of their own. So it's it's not going to be a walk in a park that last game. It's going to be, oh, I mean, we thought there were seven sin bins last year. There might be 14. <laughs> they might call the match off, Smithy. <laughs> Holy. Um, uh, mate, yeah, look, it, it, the timing is strange. Uh, isn't it interesting how we're seeing, you know, Demetrio had this great first year and they got to a prelim. Mm. Same with Craig Fitzgibbon. They didn't necessarily get to a prelim, but they, you know, had this incredible first year. Yep. And we're seeing two rookie coaches essentially in their second year well, you know, even three, you could say, Toddy Powell, oh, well, is his third year. But rookie coaches, that everything goes right one year and then, then they have a few things go wrong this year. Isn't it interesting to see how quickly things can change from great coach, this is a future, to heaps of pressure, yep. you know, no confidence. It, it, it's just a roller coaster, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Who would want to be oh, an NRL coach? Like, seriously. Like, who would want to be an NRL coach? Like, oh, given the scrutiny that they're – that they um, are under every single week. Um, and at the end of the day, mate, like it, it all comes down to winning. That it, That is it. Mm-hmm. That, that's, it's, as, it's as black and white as I can be with the scrutiny around players and coaches and, and footy clubs. If you're not winning, mate, you are under the, the blowtorch mm-hmm. all the time. Like, Start winning football games, and and the pressure the pressure is just re- relieved off you straight away, and and you can't and and you could be, you know, playing well below your best, but still winning, and nothing is said. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's just if you if you get a win, if you get the two points on the weekend, then she's happy days for everyone involved. Mm. You know what I mean? So like when you think about Craig Bellamy, like you think about the the time that he spent at that club, like twenty twenty one years, whatever it is. And you know, not have you ever have you ever heard any have you ever seen a headline or seen a news article saying his job's under threat? No. Not once. Because yeah. of because of the you know, the the results that the Melbourne Storm have got over that long period of time. Now that's a you know, fantastic um achievement by that by that footy club and a huge part of that reason is because of the work that Craig Bellamy does, but it's just and it's it's an example that I'm using where if you have a side that consistently wins, there's no pressure on the head coach. Yeah. Whereas now, particularly, mate, particularly with a team like the Rabbitohs, who are one of the, you know, for want of a better word, a glamour club of, of our competition, when you're not winning footy games, everyone is put under the blowtorch. Mm. Now, I uh, moving on to Latrell Mitchell and Cody Walker, I feel... I feel that regardless of whether it's fair, the criticism, I'm, I'm unsure as to if there is a divided changing room, if mm. there isn't, but I do feel that it's now their opportunity, as I said, regardless of whether they are in the wrong, they're not in the wrong, they are being treated differently, they aren't being treated differently. Mm-hmm. It is still, I think as leaders of the team, it's now on their shoulders to do exactly what you just said, is focus on winning for yep. everyone in the, in the playing squad because they're the guys that can get the victory. Mate, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, as a leader of that footy club, um, or leaders, should I say, their most important job now is to have themselves prepared, right, prepared as as best they can be physically and mentally for round 27. Mm. That's all that should be on their mind. Because mm. if they win it, then they're in. If they win, If they win that game, they're in the finals, and then guess what? New season. It all yeah. starts again. And they know, like... You'd like to think that they're, they're aware that they've got a, a very good footy side. Mm. And when they're at their best, they're hard to beat. It doesn't matter who they're playing, right? It doesn't matter who they're playing. So no matter the matchup in that in that first week, they should be confident that if they've prepared well and they play their best footy, that they can go out and win. So over this next you know 10-day period where they've got time to prepare, they, they, they know exactly what's coming. They've got the Roosters, round 27. I think it, I think it's a, is it a Friday night? I think, it, yeah, whatever day it is, yeah. get yourself ready 
for that. Your entire focus, your entire focus over the next 10 days is having yourself ready to go at 8 p.m. on Friday night if, if that's, you know, if that's the kickoff time. Now, if you were, I guess, let's say you were a senior player and Cam Murray was going to be the next captain at the Storm or whatever. He's obviously the captain now at the Rabbitohs, but he's, he's a young captain and, you know, he's an absolute legend of a bloke and the way he plays, it, it speaks for itself. But mm. I guess, Drew, this would probably be his hardest time because he's the captain of this club. He's got a guy like Cody Walker who is a gun who's older than him, Latrell Mitchell, big superstar. Yep. Then you've got everything happening with Sam Burgess, the coaching staff. What advice would you give a guy like Cam Murray to, to, to navigate such tough waters? Well, yeah, look, it's it's difficult because, um, you know, he's probably as captain of, of the Rabbitohs, he's, I don't think he's ever been through a situation like this. And there's there's no doubt that, you know, Latrell and Cody, like, they're, they're, they've got big profiles. They're huge profiles. Like they're, they're some of the best players in our competition. But you'd like to think as as – you know, leaders of that footy club, you know, they're not running their own race. I, I, I just, I don't know. Like, mate, no one knows apart from the people inside the, the walls of the Rabbitohs, right? I, I just, I would like to think that they don't walk around that footy club like they're bigger than everyone else. I just can't see it, mate. I, I just can't, can't see it. it. But as as captain of, you know, that footy club, and if, if I was to give, you know, Cam Murray any advice, it would be about, mate, you just – you need to do, um, you know, the thing that's that's best for you, and that is preparing to play your best game next Friday against the Roosters. Mm. But that that's the most important job of Cam Murray. It's not about trying to, you know, if there's little spot fires here and there to go around, and all of his focus is on doing that, right? That's 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 the role of of the coach and and you know other people in the organisation. His most important job as the skipper is to have himself and his team prepare the best they can for their last game of the year to give themselves a chance to be a part of the finals. Mm. And I think that, you know, sometimes, and this is, you know, post-career, as I got a little bit older, I was never clearly a senior player or anything like that. Mm. But I think that sometimes you need to almost separate the team from everyone else and go, boys, this is about us. This is about the 17 blokes to step across the field. So we can all sit here and point fingers at, at you know, at boards, at coaching staff, at yeah. former coaches or the media, and we can say they're to blame. But at the end of the day, we have the power to change the narrative regardless of who's responsible yeah. for what is happening. And I think they need to come together like that. Yeah. Well, mate, that, like I said, they haven't played their best football for a long time. Mm. So that's the best way to, t- the best way to take the spotlight off you is to, is to play well and win. Mm. So they they need to find, rediscover, you know, those performances that they showed us early in the year because it like that that doesn't disappear. Mm. The the skill that they showed and the form that they had at at the start of the year like that just doesn't evaporate into thin air. It's mm. there somewhere. They just yeah. got to they just got to find that through you know the, the next ten days that they have it at training and see every day as an opportunity to hey let's. Let's let's rediscover what we had early in the year. Like, where's it gone? We just need to unlock it. Um, but you know, like this, all this sort of stuff going on at the moment, it's just <laughs> what it does is it heaps more pressure on onto themselves. You know, press conferences this morning. You know, like social media posts last week, all that type of stuff. Right or wrong, like it's just it's it's unnecessary um, focus that they're putting on themselves. Mm. Where they should just be like doing everything they can to to you know keep the the spotlight, the magnifying glass off themselves, and just go out and play good footy. Uh, I got a text here, uh, Arvo gents, come on boys, call a spade a spade. This stinks like a cesspit. Burgess would not have walked away from this. He was made the scapegoat out of all this, trying to protect Jason Cody Latrell. Mm. Wonder what Murray and Cook think of this. They were close to Sammy the Penny Panther. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be shocked if Trell, Cody Walker, Cook, and Murray have any issues whatsoever. Mm. I would be absolutely shocked. Yeah, uh, I just don't see that. What, what do you think, Smithy? No, well, I, mate, I said that before. I just, I, I, you know, like there's rumours get all this stuff that you hear on the side and in conversations and all this sort of stuff, but I, I just can't see it. I, I just can't see those guys walking around 
you know, the Rabbitohs organisation thinking that they're bigger than everyone else and expect to be treated differently. I just, mm. I, I can't see that. I, I just can't see that. You know, have they been playing their best football? No, they haven't. Like, that's a fact. We can all see that. And I'd like to think that, you know, those guys are aware of that and they accept that too. But the, the best way, the best way to, you know, just to keep everyone quiet is to have their best preparation over the next little bit and, and come out and play their best game against the Roosters and win it. It's the most simple way I can explain how they can, you know, turn all of this stuff around Kempi. And I think also today's press conference and the, you know, actions that have been taken are clear evidence that the environment is not the best environment. So, of yeah. course, the players need to take responsibility. Absolutely. Yeah. The buck stops with them. I think we've made that pretty clear. But the environment clearly hasn't been good for these guys to thrive. We're going to head to a break. 